In this video, we're going to create code in Google Apps Script that automatically logs change history of a specific column on our sheet. So what you see here is a preview of what we're going to create today. In column A, I have a list of different project numbers. And in column B, I have drop-down selection menus for different phases or statuses of each project as where it is in the overall process. In column E, I have a log of the change history of those statuses in column B. So anytime I update from one status to another, it's going to automatically log the cell that was changed, log the user that changed it, at what time and date that occurred on the old status and the new status. So if I change this again to something else, it'll create another entry and reference the old status and the new status it was updated to. So the first thing we want to do is get into the App Script editor window. You can do that by going to Extensions and then App Script. To save time, I have already created the code and I'm going to quickly run through it. So in this case, we're using a built-in function called onEdit. So the function name has to be this and the casing matters there. That E needs to be capitalized. What the onEdit function does is it will run code when an edit occurs on your sheet. It's a built-in trigger function, so it allows you to pass a variable that stands for the event. So we'll call this variable E, just represents the event or change that occurred on the sheet. And our first variable is going to be called sheet. That is equal to the event variable. And then that has a parameter called source that allows us to get the active sheet where the edit occurred. We then have a variable called range that is equal to our event variable and then we want to get the range where that edit occurred. In our log we eventually want to get the user name of the person who made the edit so we're going to create a variable called user that is equal to session and then get the active user and get the email of that user. We also want to log a timestamp so we're going to create a variable called timestamp and what we need to do here is create a new instance of a date which will create a date and timestamp when the edit occurred and we're going to use a method called to local string that simply converts that date and time to a string because we want to do that in order to log it as text in our cell. We're going to have a variable called row which is equal to our range variable and then that allows you to use a method called get row and that just simply returns the row number of where that change event happened. We're going to have a similar one for column we use our range variable and then get column method to return the column number of where that edit occurred. We have a variable called old value which is equal to our event variable and that has a property called old value that simply returns the previous value of the cell where the edit occurred and then a similar thing for the new value our event variable and then the value the new value of that cell where the change occurred so we have a variable called next row and what we want to do is get the next available row in column e where we have our log so what we're going to do is use our sheet variable and we're going to start at the bottom of our sheet so we're just gonna start just think of this as a starting point we want to get range E1000 and then we're going to do the equivalent of control up arrow so we're gonna use 
get next data cell method. And then within that, we're going to reference the spreadsheet application, which has a parameter called direction. And then we, from there, we want to go up. That will be like the equivalent of hitting control up arrow. So if I'm like in row 19 and hit control up arrow, it takes me to the last row containing values in column E, and we're going to return that row number. Now we want to get the next available blank row below it. So later in our code, we're going to reference this variable and add one to it. We have a final variable called cell message, is which represents the message we want to input in our log. So it's going to begin with our range variable, and we want to get A1 notation, which will return the cell reference as text of where the edit occurred and then we're going to use a plus symbol to join that to some text space was changed by and then I have a single quote here because we want to enclose the user variable inside single quotes so we have a plus join that to our user variable another plus to join that to some text space on another plus symbol to join it to our timestamp variable, another plus to join it back to some more text, space from, another plus to join it to our old value variable, another plus to join it to some more text, two, another plus to join it to our new value variable, and another plus really just to enclose that new value variable with an ending single quote. So finally, we have an if statement here because we only want our log to happen if certain conditions are met. First off, we only want this on edit code to execute and create a log if we're on sheet one. If we have more than one sheet, we don't want our on edit code to execute because it will unless you specify specific sheet you want it to happen on. So secondly, we want to make sure that the change only happens in column B, which is where our drop down list is. And we don't want our code to run if the first row of column B is changed because maybe we'll change our header. We don't want our code to execute. So we have an if statement here. So our first condition is if our event source get sheet name is equal to sheet one, which is our first, we have a double and here to reference our second condition. If the column is equal to column two, which is column B, and our final and condition, if the row which stores the row where our edit occurred is not equal to row one. If all of those conditions are met, what we want to do is with our sheet variable, we want to get range. For the row input of the get range, we're going to use our next row variable, which gets the last row containing values in column E. We're going to add one to that, which gets us the next available blank row. Our column reference is column five, which is column E, and we're gonna set the value of that cell to our cell message variable. So I'm gonna hit save here to save this. Now with the on edit, the interesting thing about that is you don't have to authorize this to make it run. It's just code that will execute without authorization so I am going to change this cell to phase one. And what we should see here is our log B5 was changed by me on April 30th at 10.12 a.m. from not started to phase one. If I change this to phase two, it's going to add another change 
history to our log and that is that the only difference here is we changed it from phase one to phase two and the timestamp would be a little different well that is all for now thanks for watching